Hi, I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Keith Ghostland. I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's Tuesday, February 19th. We're going to be watching the Democratic debates later tonight, but you will have, you know, the day will have passed by the time you see us. But anyway, we have a lot of headlines for you this evening, starting with Linda, with national headlines. Hello. Well, hi, Ann. That's you. <laughs> hi, Keith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of politics, Roy Moore is back. Oh, good. Yes. Did he go away? No. Uh, well, he, you know, he lost the election, but let's hope they put him up again. Yeah. The last time we saw him, he was riding his horse. Yes. Yeah, it didn't go far enough. Well, he blasted LGBTQ people during a Ten Commandments party. Do you think he reads those Ten Commandments? Ten Commandments <laughs> party. There we go. <sighs> okay. <laughs> The Boy Scouts are filing for bankruptcy amid sexual abuse lawsuits, right? Um, and our own Christine Hulquist endorses Bernie Saunders. Mm -hmm. um, Hulquist ran against Scott in a gubernatorial race here in Vermont. I think she is the first transpa transparent transgender, transgender candidate for governor in the country. Yes. Who, that's what you meant. To yes, say. that's what I was going to say. To endorse him, Pete Buttigieg responds to Rush Limbaugh. Right-wing minister claims being trans is a Jewish plot. Lily Tomlin is leaving her prince on Hollywood Boulevard. The professor who said he had the right to misgender trans students loses his case in court. OAC. Dismisses complaints about her appearance. AOC. AOC. Yes. What's her first name? Alex Alexandria, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Cortez. Yes. Uh, about her uh, appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, in Iowa, conservative propose adding sexual orientation to marriage licenses. That's a really interesting thing. On Ohio Bill, will send doctors to jail for years for treating trans youth. Texas demands the Supreme Court put an end to the pro-LGBT California law. Uh, in Ohio, megachurch has reached an undisclosed settlement uh, with a former employee. Buttigieg fundraisers disrupted by queers against Pete. A gay man is shot in Miami after kissing in his car. Lesbian feminist who helped coin the term identity politics back Saunders. Barbara Smith, mm -hmm. a black lesbian feminist for social justice, thinks Saunders, Saunders is the best candidate. Trayvon Martin's killer, George Zimmerman, is suing Democratic presidential candidates Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren. And in ancient mythology, Orpheus was a musician those beautiful voice and lyrical talent convinced the gods to return his dead wife. Um, this is played by a gay singer, um, and we'll have we have a picture of him now. And um, so there'll be more stories. It's an opera, right? It's an opera, yeah. A yeah. drag opera. A drag opera. Okay. And we're going to have a picture of him right now. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. A lot of headlines. Here. I do. She's been busy. I know. And it's only been a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trivia. And apparently you kind of have to be from Vermont and probably <coughs> central Vermont to get it. Out in the Mountains, front page, February 1991. It talked about a 40th birthday party that was happening at Contois Auditorium in Burlington for a native-born feminist performance artist who may have written the song, Don't Drop Your Goddamn Bombs On Me. Who was it? And then events. One of the things that's happening is the Pride Center is putting out a comprehensive list, and they're truly trying to get things that are happening statewide. They still have some hiccups. But it's making it really difficult for me to be able to report on events 
because it came out Sunday for this week. So if I were to tell you everything, you would miss they, it. <laughs> they'd be over by the time this is aired. But please look at their website, Uncoming Events, and know that there is now a monthly drag show that's happening at Wonder Bar in Bellows Falls mm -hmm. in addition to what's happening at Merchants Hall in Rutland. That's interesting. So it looks as though people around the state are trying to come up with ongoing events so that there are creating forums for our community to get together. So what we heard at those town hall forums of where is my community, we're creating that space again. So I, I like it. And, and there's a coffee, but that'll be over too. Won't it? Coffee and Saturday. conversation will have occurred by the time yeah. we air. If you're watching this, you missed it because it was this morning. <laughs> it was great too. <laughs> Not too sure about the dark coffee. Though, but the, <laughs> and, and then we're going to talk a bit about the news. People know about the veto of the paid family and medical leave. Well, there's a little update, minimum wage. And then I want to talk a little bit about the census because people are going to start getting notices right off and why the LGBTQ plus communities, we really need to participate and how we're going to benefit from it. And then I want to talk a little bit about DNA and transgender. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So did you see? I saw that. It's okay. very just, just a passing comment for people to think about. Mm -hmm. And are we going to talk about the films or no? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, but I have a film to discuss, yeah. but these are my headlines. Um, there will be a dad and mum Putin rules out uh -huh. Russia legalizing gay marriage, and that's it. I have a I saw that, yeah. kind of a quaint quote from him. Uh, Russian police raid pussy riot video shoot, uh, and I have a clip of that. Uh, rejected by its home country, and here's where the films come in. Uh, this Georgian dance film has become a surprise hit, and I'll have a clip for you later. Other headlines. Anti-LGBT incidents in Israel increased by 36% in 2019. South London now has a permanent rainbow pedestrian crossing. Trans woman makes history representing Pakistan at the United States. Sports ambassador Amzid Lathi on how to improve, improve Asian and LGBTQ representation in sport. And finally, four arrested over the murder of Northern Irish journalist Kira Lyra McKee. So I can get to all these stories perhaps. Um, at least I'll be able to touch on some of them later in the program. But now let's go back to Linda. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Buttigieg responds uh, to Rush Limbaugh's insults about him and his husband. Pete appeared on Fox News with Chris Wallace and responded to Rush's criticism of his homosexuality. Pete said, I'm not going to be lectured to by the likes of Rush Limbaugh or anybody who supports Donald Trump as the moral and well-being of our political leader in the United States. As to the moral yes. world. Mm -hmm. America is ready, he said, to move on from this kind, from the, their values. Rush said that Pete loves to kiss his husband on the debate stage, and that would be difficult for children to see. I was gonna say my nieces and nephews grew up with my doing it repeatedly and they seem to have turned out okay. And my mm -hmm. children too. I, I mean, they mm -hmm. seem to be fine, but you know. So moving on. <laughs> Right-wing minister claims being trans is a Jewish plot to make humanity androgynous. Rick Wiles hosted and agreed with guests who somehow managed to combine trans hatred with the anti-Semitism. Their claims is that transgender is a Zionist plot. Rick Wiles has a radio show where he showcased Jana and Steve Ben-Nun, um, Messianic Jews. 
that believe that Jesus is the true Messiah and that salvation only comes from accepting him as your Savior. So. Hmm. Now, how anybody could have hatched that plant is, you know, Lily Tomlin is leaving <coughs> her prints on Hollywood Boulevard. Her career as an actor, uh, comedian, and producer has stretched over 40 years. Turner Classic Movies will honor Tomlin with a hand and footprint at the world-famous Tell Chinese Theater. She has eight Emmys, two, Bidi, two Peabody Awards, and the Actors Guild Lifetime Achievement Award. I saw Lily Tomlin in Iowa City in 1976. Oh, you're such a breaker. <laughs> I, I saw her at the Flynn oh. on tour doing Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, and we had dinner together. <gasps> oh, Ooh. you got me on that Yeah, one. there we are. I've never seen her. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen her, except on TV. AOC dis dismisses complaints about her appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race. Conservative Jolly, uh, Charlie Kirk tweeted, I wonder why she never claims to be proud to pledge allegiance to the flag. Time well spent in the Congress, he said sarcastically. Mike Dice called her a degenerate communist. Apparently, you know, like on, I haven't seen RuPaul's Drag Race, does anybody? But anyway, no. they say, Pledge, um, I pledge allegiance to drag something, right? Or they, they make this statement. It's, yeah, well, it's, yeah, to it's drag a humorous. Forever, yeah. I know, yeah. <coughs> so that's that's what the context of this was, is like, well, she pledges allegiance to this drag show, but she doesn't pledge allegiance to the United States, which is totally ridiculous. But anyway, you're next. Oh, it's mine next? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talking a little bit about legislation. In, in the House, in general housing and military affairs, they're still talking about the resolution to issue the apology for eugenic-inspired sterilization. And this is es essentially to Vermont's Abenaki people. Mm -hmm. And Chief Stevens has already gone and testified saying, before there can be real healing to occur, there needs to be an apology made. So this looks as though it's moving through, it's going to come out, on committee, out of committee, and will be voted on this week. As people are aware, Governor Scott vetoed the legislator's version of the paid family and medical leave Ooh. bill. Ooh. And, and the Senate <laughs> was able to override. The House was one vote short. Well, what, the governor, what he is now putting forward is the Sununu Scott proposal Hmm. which has a wealth of benefits, but is a voluntary process. And in recent conversations between the LGBTQIA Alliance in Vermont and the administration, there has been a formal request to review the legislation to see their definition of family. Because what the legislature did was greatly expanded so that our relationships and how we form family are included, and they have in, indicated a willingness to change their language to make the same inclusion. Hmm. So that's happening. So what does voluntary mean? Is that like, okay, you people who want to pay a can and those, well, well, how is that going to work? I mean, it's, it's business and employees would say, yes, indeed, we want to establish this process. It will happen if the business and the employees say, no, we don't want to do what it. If one it's not one mandatory. Does. What if the employees do, but the employer doesn't? I think, you're, I think that there is a, an RFP that has gone out to look at what would happen in those kinds of questions and how the funding matrix would be created. Because it may be that I, as the employee, pay into a bank that I can then draw from when I want to use it, but there is not an employer matching donation mm. or matching appropriation. Yeah, that doesn't seem very feasible to me, but... <laughs> we'll <All right>. see. 
Minimum wage, as people are aware, he, he vetoed this as well. The Senate has overridden it by a substantial margin, 24 to 6. They only needed 20 votes. The House has yet to establish a time to take this up. The concern is that when the House voted on this and, and the compromise bill, <coughs> they only had 93 votes supporting it. They need 100. I will tell you it is a monumentous task to get seven votes, to get seven legislators to be willing to change their vote to override a veto. So Very we'll see what happens. Very yeah. discouraging, um, if I may Yeah, it, exactly. So the other thing that people will know has happened, as in Tuesday night, was the public hearing on domestic violence and firearms, H610. And the House Judiciary Committee has revised some of their language because they found where some of the language left it open for a challenge as to if it was or was not constitutional. They think they've corrected that. They're devoting this entire week to getting this bill out. Well, they should. So this is a priority for them. And that's because next week gets right into what's called crossover. If bills are not voted out of either chamber by the end of next week, the other chamber does not <coughs> have to take it up during this session. So that means any bill that hasn't advanced That's ain't going to happen. And one of my concerns is looking at House Human Services, the older Vermonters Act, the committee hasn't voted on. And it wasn't on the committee schedule for this week. If it is a priority, letting your legislator know that H611 older Vermonters with the amended language, which clearly includes us, is a priority, might be a well-placed phone call. Mm. I was going to ask you, should we remind people about, I don't know, because we're not going to uh, take air again for a little while, about the event going on at the State House? For visibility LGBT, yeah, visibility? That's March 31st. Right. And we're going to have yeah. another That's show March. between now okay. and then. Okay. Two more. There's March 13th, though, which is right. a Friday, which mm -hmm. is the coffee with the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. 8.30 to 10, right. which is earlier than some people may That's be up. That's right. I'm going to try to make it. It'll, it'll be muffins and coffin and scintillating conversation. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, let's go back to our friend... Uh, Putin, who uh, said on Thursday that Russia would not legalize gay marriage as long as he was in the Kremlin. He made clear that he would not allow the traditional notion of mother and father to be subverted by what he called parent number one and parent number two. As far as parent number one and parent number two goes, I've already spoken publicly about this, and I'll not repeat it. I'll repeat it again. As long as I'm president, this will not happen. There will be dad and mom. Who knows what he would do with our parentage bill from last year with de facto parenting, where they could be parent three and four. <laughs> well, this isn't much of a surprise from yeah, no. um, And in that vein. Russian police raided a pussy riot shoot this weekend, last weekend. It's been eight years since all three members of Pussy Riot were sentenced to serve in a penal colony in Russia, charged with, quote, premeditated hooliganism performed, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> performed by an organized group of people motivated by religious hatred or hostility. Since then, not much seems to have changed. On February, Sunday, February 9th, the band were shooting a music video when Russian police broke into the location of the shoot and shut it down. Aptly, the song the video was for, the song the video was for, Rage, is dedicated to uh, pain <laughs> that we feminists and queer people feel being the enemies of the state, according to the band. A police baton on my ribs, I'm singing with blood today, are some of the lyrics. Wow. 
In Russia, spreading gay propaganda has been illegal since 2013, and it's supposed to prevent children from being exposed to information about homosexuality while protecting Russia's family values. In the years since, queer clubs have been raided, gay films uh, attemptedly banned, attempt, were banned, and trans people prevented from driving. According to Pussy Riot spokespeople, they were accused of gay propaganda, extremism, and making an illegal video when the raid shoot was raided. We had a contact contract with the location and paid for everything, they said in a statement. It did not matter because the police's task was to prevent a video shoot. They continued, the Russian political police commanded to the studio where we were shooting to cut off electricity in the whole building. When we rented an electric generator, the police who surrounded the building did not let us bring the generator in to be sure we couldn't film. Later, we were kicked out of the building with no legal explanations. We lost $15,000 on video production. The video features 150 activists, most female and queer. Um, Pussy Riot says they're planning on finishing the video in a stand for freedom of speech and expression in Russia. In the meantime, they've released the preview clip from the video above. So now let's watch the clip. It shows the beginning of the video they were shooting and then the police barging in. So let's take a look at that. Здравствуйте, господа. Какой у нас статус? Потому что у вас не согласовано это все. Не допускается осуществление экстремистской деятельности. Спасибо огромное ебаным российским ментам, но клип в любом случае все равно с ними. Короче, я надеюсь, что однажды мы будем свободны делать то, что мы хотим. I'm surprised they're still able to function at all in that in Russia. It's they're such a they're such heroines. Yeah, and heroes. Yes. Um, let's go on to a film, if we may, in the same part of the country. Um, it's it was filmed in Georgia, and director Levon Akin's new movie may have been rejected by the country where it was filmed, but elsewhere in the world, moviegoers are embracing it. And Then We Danced opens in nine more North American markets this weekend That's on good. the heels of successful openings in New York, Chicago, and other cities, and a slew of festival screenings around the globe, just not in Georgia, the native country of Akin's grandparents, where he filmed his low-budget surprise hit dance film. The film was dropped from the Tbilisi Film Festival last fall, and I think I probably reported on it, after massive protests at the premiere turned violent. Police in riot gear separated filmgoers from far-right activists and angry Orthodox priests, all because the film depicts a same-sex relationship between two dancers auditioning for Georgia's National Dance Company. Huh. Yet the movie earned a standing ovation last year at Cannes, in Sweden, the country that welcomed Akin's parents as immigrants, submitted and then we danced to the Oscars for its entry as best international feature. It wasn't nominated then, but Akin had been working in Swedish film and television for about a decade when he saw footage of Tbilisi's 2013 gay pride parade. The event drew far more protesters than participants and brave marchers were just kids, Akin said. He wanted to tell a story about growing up in Georgia today and decided that dance would provide the best lunch. lens. It's somewhat rare to see a dance film that takes folk dance seriously and examines how economic privilege too often determines who gets to be a dancer. 
It's the case in so many countries, including Georgia and England and the United States. To be able to pursue art, you have to come from a rich background, he says. It's a privilege to be able to say, I'm going to be an actor or I'm going to be a dancer. And although the movie has drawn comparisons to Call Me By Your Name, Aachen maintains that this is a coming of age movie, not a coming out movie. As he depicts it, Georgia's national company is run by homophobic tyrants, especially the director of the junior ensemble. Georgian audiences are saying we could have exaggerated him even more. They really do rage and throw things at the dancers. So now let's look at a clip from And Then We Danced. Sami, Can we get that for here? It looks good, it, and yeah. it's around. It's been released, and I wonder maybe if we can get it. Will have it. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. You want to hear more from me? No, not at the moment. Okay, but we may get back to you. Good. I hope so, because I have a lot <laughs> more to talk about. But maybe not. <laughs> Apparently, you're on probation. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really interesting because in Ohio. Uh, Conservative proposed adding sexual orientation to marriage licenses and punishing liars. Now this means a Republican lawmaker has proposed a law in Iowa Senate that would create a state record of people's sexual orientation on their marriage licenses. Now why they would want to do this is so it can be referred to during divorces. So if you put down that you're straight and then you come out later, as some of us have, you know, or in marriages. Dennis Gulf would also make fraudulent concealment of sexual orientation grounds for a divorcing couple to lose custody of their children, the same as sexual abuse. Mm. I mean, who thinks this up? Apparently conservative Republicans with too much time on their hands. I mean, really. So, if you've got to get over their obsession with our bedroom and our genitalia. <laughs> God. So, if you get married at 18 to a guy and you come out at 30 as a lesbian and you didn't put down sexual orientation, you, that'd be grounds to lose your children and your whatever. Hmm. Oh, God. An Ohio bill would send doctors to jail for years for treating trans youth. Yeah, mm -hmm. A new Ohio bill would turn doctors into felons for treating trans children with medically approved standard procedures. Doctors would be charged with a third degree felon for providing therapeutic or surgical procedures intended to alter the gender of someone under 18. Texas demands the Supreme Court put an end to pro-LGBT California law 
which we know um, says that in 2016, California passed a law that prohibits uh, any state employee from going to states that don't have right. uh -huh. uh, non-discrimination policies. Um, so he's suing. You can't use state money to finance the, the trip or the seminar, yeah. And, he, and Ken Paxton, the person who brought this suit, says that Texas has every right to allow adoption agencies to ban gay and lesbian adoptions if they so choose. We'll see what the outcome is. Of course, yeah. Texas is manned. So what? <laughs> it's Texas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then we have, um, oh, the Buttigieg fundraiser. Disrupted by Queers Against Pete. The event took place at the National LGBTQ Center. The entry fee was $250 and featured Pete answering questions. Queers Against Buttigieg oppose him because his stand on Medicare for All. They say he represents a white upper class sensibility that is not representative of the LGBTQ community. May I so, speak? Yes. I just read an article this week by Masha Gessen, that wonderful lesbian writing for the mm -hmm. New Yorker, who kind of clarifies that the reason a lot of LGBT people oppose Buttigieg isn't, of course, that he's gay, but that he's so mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, again, the divide between the revolutionaries and the uh, almost the assimilationists, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's part of the trouble there. Yeah, that's a good point. He, he's a clear example of, of how we in our communities have been co-opted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Although I just have to editorialize that probably the queers against Pete could be, they said maybe they, queers against Trump might be a little more. Well, they said they- On the money. When he, when it was referenced, I think, in, in that he, someone or he said, they're, they're homophobic. They said, no, we're queer. Yeah. So, oh. Oh. So okay. they were definitely, you know. I get it. Sure. Yeah. A gay man is shot in Miami after kissing in his car. One is in critical condition. A stray bullet also injured a woman trying to get into her car with her wife nearby. <coughs> this was a drive-by incident. Their car... The guys who were kissing's car was surrounded by men on all-terrain vehicles who just randomly started shooting at them. And so who were the women shot? They happened to be in the parking lot. This and they were two kissing each other? They they were no, the two men were kissing each other. The, they were attacked by this group of men right. on an all-terrain. And the two women were just getting into their car. And, were and they were lesbians, a so. bullet. Yes. Huh. Coincidentally. How interesting. Well, yeah. I was going to ask if there was something unique about the area that they were to... Yeah. Or some event that they were coming yeah. from. No, I don't uh, think so. It was like a shopping mall or huh. you know, something. Um, okay, and then Trayvon Martin's killer, George Zimmerman, is suing Democratic president candidates Pete Buttigieg and Elizabeth Warren for malicious defamation. He claims the two have painted him as a white supremacist and racist. Zimmerman, who became the face of racial profiling after killing that spawned a nationwide pro protest, was acquitted of charges when he argued that he killed Martin in self-defense in a decision widely criticized as racist. His attorney used racist tropes to win, painting the unarmed teenager as a threat. So. I hope that suit Andrew doesn't Brown. get very far. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep you informed if we hear more about that. And then we have in ancient, ancient mythology, Anne Plummy knows all about this, so. Orpheus was a musician whose beautiful voice and lyrical talent convinced the gods to return his dead wife. Is it Eurydice? Eurydice. 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 To the world of the living. In Eurydice, a new opera by composer Matthew Achen at the Los Angeles Opera. That voice belongs to a gay black singer, John Holliday. Holliday, a 35-year-old uh, countertenor, 
The highest register for a male singer has a unique role in the production of the Music Center's Dorothy Chandler's Pavilion. He portrays Orpheus's double, who sings on stage alongside the performer, cast as the myth mythical figure Joshua Hopkins, in order to imbue his music with an ethereal element. One of Holiday's primary task in Eurystices was diving into the nature of this role. The performer sees a dual role for his character. He is a supernatural being that speaks for Orpheus when Orpheus can't say something or when Orpheus wants to say something on a heightened level. Yet he is also an ally, an ally whose present presence reminds Orpheus, I've got your back. You don't have to do it alone. I'll help you. Mm. So that sounds very interesting. No. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big opera fan. I haven't had a lot of exposure, I just want to say. But this sounds very interesting. Get tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> Fly out to LA. Yeah. Yeah. So recent study that has been released and it was looking at DNA and DNA markers and they were specifically looking <coughs> at people who identified as transgender and it was and it, the sample size was large enough that it's just, it was a study of merit it, it had scientific weight to it they found with the people who identified <coughs> as being transgender 21 different variants on their DNA. Mm -hmm. Now, they're not ready to say they found a transgender gene, but as we continue to have this conversation and as they continue to do research and response, they're coming up with more and more a physiological, biological support for people who identify as transgender or gender identity. You know, and I remember that about a year ago there was a study about brain patterning and that, you know, male versus female patterns and they are able to clearly distinguish between the two that those people who identified as transgender, their brain patterning followed that of their identified identity oh. and not their biological gender at birth. So I'm, I'm continuously fascinated by, and we will tell you more. It's kind of a slippery slope, though, isn't it? As well, they, it's, you know, it's like as they find there is a gene, then people yeah. will want to correct the gene. I mean, it's always, you It's know. a new frontier, though. Yeah. But at least we're starting to have the conversation, which is encouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The census is coming right up. Why we should participate is that there will be an option if you are married to identify that it is a same gender marriage. You can also identify if it is a same gender household who is not married. But it is not going to ask the question about sexual orientation and gender identity as been, had been proposed during the Obama administration. Why we in Vermont really need to participate is the estimate from the Census Commission, of which I have been appointed, is they estimate approximately 4,000 federal dollars comes in for every person in Vermont that is included on the census. So if you have an interest in older Vermonters, we want to be included so that when they start talking about what are we going to do with the federal money coming in for elder services, we get a voice in that. So dates you should be aware of starting March 12th, you're going to start getting the invitation to participate. Okay. And you're going to be able to do it either online or by phone. And they track it by, not by your name, but by your residence address. So that if there is not a response back from your address, there will be two more notices that are sent to you asking you to, to participate. To you're getting ahead of yourself. But yes, you can have tea and crumpets. You will get several more reminders. You know, April 1st is when the real kickoff is, is you know, they're really looking for participation. 
at the end of April, you'll get a final notice if there hasn't been a res response from your residence address. And then May 13th through July 31st, that's when they come knocking at your door. And, by the way, as Governor Scott shared in his most recent press conference, they're still looking for a thousand workers oh my gosh to go out and do that door to door if you're interested in part-time employment from may 13th to july 31st and you can pretty much set how many hours you're willing to work they want to hear from you u.s census go online register all right okay they um, pay pretty well too i heard yes they do Let's go to Israel where bad things are happening. Okay. An annual report by, no, by a nonprofit shows that 2,125 cases, mostly online, but also by state officials, family members, and others of uh, anti-LGBT incidents have occurred. 272 teens were forced to flee their homes. Anti-LGBT incidents in Israel increased by 36% in 2019, uh, Israel's LGBT task force nonprofit reports. According to the annual report, which was published for the seventh year, as I said, 2,125 cases were recorded last year, one or most, or, or one almost every four hours. Most incidents happened online, primarily on social media, according to the report. Online attacks spiked by 58% in August, a month after newly appointed Education Minister Rafi Peretz backed gay conversion therapy and the fringe anti-gay Noam Party launched its election campaign. Now let's take a picture now, of, let's look at a picture now of members of the LGBT community and activists <clears throat> protesting against this education minister in Tel Aviv on the 14th of July. The report added that 13% of the incidents of anti-gay bias came from state branches, particularly discrimination by employees of the administration of border crossings, population, and immigration dealing with marriage and parenthood records, requests to change one's gender, and surrogacy abroad. 29% of the incidents happened within the family, the report said, adding that 272 teenagers were forced to leave their homes due to anti-LGBT harassment. About 8% of the cases happened in public spaces, and 5% occurred in educational institutions. 3% of the incidents occurred in workplaces, with about half the offenders being managers or bosses and half being colleagues. The vast majority of the cases, 60%, were recorded in the Tel Aviv area, because a lot of LGBT people live there. Um, and there are also many shelters and community centers there. 11% of the incidents were recorded in Haifa, 10% in Beersheba, and 9% in Jerusalem. This reality doesn't come out of nowhere. There are those who choose to feed it, this activist group added. It grows stronger when Israel's education minister wants to convert an entire part of society. We won't allow ourselves to be erased from the public sphere. We will protect the personal safety of the community members, and we will continue taking action for equality and freedom, they said. So, trouble in Israel. What was that name of the movie we saw where the Israeli fell in love with the Palestinian? I know, I can't oh, remember. It was, was really so good. Yeah. good. We'll have to look that up I for next time. I can't remember the name of that, but that was really good. Let's look at the South London Crosswalk now, if we could. <laughs> Oh, just because it? it's pretty. Where is it? <laughs> Observe it on your screen. <laughs> Although several temporary rainbows popped up around the capital during Pride Month, in Greenwich, Woolwich, Plumstead, and Wimbledon, they all jazzed up the roads in a similar way. This is the first crossing in the UK to become a permanent fixture.
It puts London in good company with Sydney, Paris, and Vancouver, all cities with year-round rainbow crossings. No, Washington, D.C. What's the point of, <laughs> no, Washington. What's the point of all this? Well, homophobic and transphobic hate crimes have doubled in the UK over the last five years. And according to figures released by Stonewall, more than a third of LGBTQ plus people don't feel comfortable walking down the street holding a partner's hand. Herne Hill, where this crosswalk is, this gesture of solidarity comes after a succession of serious homophobic incidents in the capital. In May, a lesbian couple was attacked on a London bus. Remember I showed you that? Yes. Yeah. Um, both women were treated in the hospital. Um, still, the rainbow glow up might not solve a lot of problems, but it's still a nice nod to the LGBTQ plus community at a time when that feels seriously needed in the capital. Now, may I Do you think it's because of the conservative government they I have do. there, too, yeah, like I we do. have? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of same-sex couples don't feel comfortable holding hands in the U.S. either. No. Um, may I continue? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I'd like to talk now about... Apparently you passed probation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. I have a lot more to say, too. Um, a trans woman makes history representing Pakistan at the United States, at the United Nations, sorry. Let's look at a picture of her. Her name is Aisha Mughal. She's way on the right at the United Nations Convention. Um, she received this um, honor. She works with the Ministry of Human Rights in Pakistan and was one of the country's delegates at the UN Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. The delegation was led by the ministry's Minister of Human Rights. Uh, she's an expert on trans rights. Prime Minister Imran Khan said that the government was taking responsibility for trans people who say they are routinely denied treatment and can face harassment or ridicule from hospital staff and patients. It also plans to separate hospital wards um, for trans patients. And if I just may. You lost your place. I can't. I'm, <laughs> all right. Uh, she <laughs> praised her country's record on trans rights, saying Pakistan has become an example for the entire world. With all the support from the government, I feel proud to be a Pakistani transgender woman. Uh, and then as I mentioned in a previous report, Pakistan extended free health care to trans people in a landmark mood move. All trans people will now be eligible for free medical treatment, including transition-related care. The government is giving trans people a special health card that will give them access to an existing government health insurance scheme which was introduced in 2015 to provide health cards for those earning less than $2 a day, although trans people will not face that financial test. Is that considered high income? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, um, now let me, if I have time, I'd like to at least show you um, two more pictures. Okay. This one first is of sports ambassador Amazon Lei Thai on how to improve Asian and representation in sports. There's an interview that I read with her. Um, she's not only, she's a sport ambassador for Stonewall. And not only is she an activist for um, LGBT rights, she's also uh, an activist about HIV positive uh, considerations, talks about depression, um, she grew up in Australia and was bullied severely. Um, she participates in the Rainbow Laces campaign, which is um, a movement, an LGBT movement in the Premier League of the UK. And she talks about all the problems, you know, like the bosses, the managers, but mostly the fan base. How can you guide a fan base 
not to yell homophobic and racial slurs mm -hmm. and so forth. And then one more um, sad story I'd like to get you, get to you, get, I'd like to present. Share with you. Share with <laughs> you, that's it. It's about Lyra McKee and we remember her. I have her picture there before you. Um, she was 29, she was shot in, um, on April 18th, 2019, an acclaimed journalist, she was killed in the Craigan area of um, Derry. Um, in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland. Yeah. And four men, aged 20, 27, 29, and 52, were arrested this morning under the Terrorism Act after the new IRA claimed responsibility for the death. Her death sent shockwaves through the UK and Northern Ireland. It was met with an outpouring of grief in media circles and in the LGBT community. And you may recall she was about to propose to her partner. She was planning to propose to her girlfriend at the time of her death. And they, of course, didn't get to marry. Yeah. And now Northern Ireland, same-sex marriage is um, allowed allowed in Northern Ireland, but, you know, very tragic. So there she is, and the police still haven't solved the problem. They've arrested these four men, but they're saying, oh, please, if you know anything, because they have footage of right before she was shot, but it's not really very conclusive about who did it, so. So we don't know who they are, but the police know who they right. are. Right, they've okay. arrested these four people, okay. but it's still pending, and they're still issuing calls for the public yeah. To record. If, if you saw this, please back up what we think is we know. real. Yeah. Right, right. So, that native born feminist performance artist. Yes. That escaped both of them. Yes. You know, wrote, Don't drop your goddamn bombs on me. It may be Janice Perry, mm -hmm. who was born in Barrie and is also known as. Gow. And she had some sold out performances here in Vermont. And actually in Germany, she has a large fan base. So. Is she Germany. still alive? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And still performing. Huh. I wonder why she. Um, I've never. Uh, you need to get out more. How old is she? Well, we all need. Yeah. She was 40 in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> Get out your calculators and please get back to us. And with that, we say... 70, oh. I would say she's in her 70s, says Smarty Pants. Somewhere in her 70s. <laughs> We're All hopeless. righty then. And um, with that and our, the DOJ and everything that's happening with Barr and... Uh, in these frightening times we live in, I don't know if we'll recover ever. Yeah. But we'll have each other. I have and hope. We'll, and we'll try to have each other's backs. In the meantime, please resist. resist.